Welcome to part two. In this volume in the series, we will be addressing the intermediate operational and functionality of the Karambit. We mentioned this briefly in our earlier training. We're going to look at uh, a little bit of the uh, detail that goes into changing range and um, operating with the Karambit. One of these uh, main important elements is changing elevation, going from a high position to a low position. And we talked about these three different postures. Uh, it was uh, uh, going from standing to going to kneeling to going to low kneeling to going to sitting. Okay, so we're going to talk about the first part, which is going to kneeling. If, for example, he is working with a training tool, and I'm working with the karambit, I would like to change elevation. For an example, he's coming from the high line, the high open, and I come to the outside and change elevation. So I'm going into a solid three-point stance. Okay, let's do that again. <clears throat> On the high line attack, I'm going to move down and away. There are three major points to keep in mind when you're changing elevation, especially going to a kneeling position. The kneeling position is described as we uh, described before, a single point on the foot, a single point on the toes, and a single point on the knees. Solid three-point stance. The movement is, as the motion occurs, you're stepping to the outside and moving your body down and away. And you're keeping the edge and the tip in your center. Similar to a light going from yellow to red, you want to have proper timing. If he slashes in this direction and I move after the slash, it's bad timing. If I move before the slash, he can simply change direction. So I need to have proper timing when I'm moving down and away. And that is to develop the skill to time when the movement is occurring. So this particular drill will be beginning at long range where neither one of us can make contact with the body. From this position, he will uh, deliver a slow and controlled slashing motion to the high line. In which I, in which this, this case, I'll move to the outside, down and away, establishing a solid three-point stance, keeping the edge forward. The other position in which you can travel on the low line by changing elevation is going the other direction. Same thing. We gauge for a long distance, make sure we can't touch each other. He raises up, slashes. I move to the backward position. So let's take a closer look at the way the knees work. If I was to move forward, I'm going to move my foot forward by taking a step and dropping the weight behind for support. If you choose to move backward, the same position, the rear leg goes first and the front leg comes back. So when you put all the pieces together, it goes back and then the knee comes down. Okay, so we'll look at that again. In order to avoid stepping forward and down. And again, going backwards, backwards and down. In either position, you're creating this solid three-point stance in changing elevation. So let's keep those points in mind. Number one, timing. I don't want to be there when my attacker is. I want to be out of the way long before. And my two positions can be either forward, where I'm moving outside, or I can move back 45 degrees away from the attack in a solid three-point stance via changing elevation. One point in tactical operation with the karambit, very similar to a firearm. This is a, known as a red gun. It's an inert piece of molded plastic which is incapable of firing uh, for demonstration purposes. And again, similar to uh, operation of a firearm, in which case you may have the situation where you need to execute a tactical or a speed reload, the operation occurs up at about eye level. The same thing applies for the karambit. When you're moving forward or backward or changing elevation, you want to keep the blade and hand up around face or eye level so you can see from your line of vision, not only what's going around you, but also the blade in front of you. Very similar to operation of a firearm. One of the best ways to develop your mobility is to train with your partner 
uh, in simultaneous movement forward and backward. We're going to combine some of the earlier training drews that we did uh, prior and put them together using mobility. So this is our first mobility training drill. Okay, when we uh, face our partner, <clears throat> we're going to start at approximately close range, so our hands are relatively able to make contact uh, at close quarters. When he steps forward with his lead leg, I'm going to keep my hand up and the bottom hand under. When he steps forward again, I'm going to keep this hand again on the outside and place palm up, palm down. Now I'll be stepping forward, he thrusts the inside hand. Remember we're always trying to achieve an outside position. Bottom hand palm up, right hand palm down. I step forward again, palm up, palm down. He steps forward, palm up, palm down. He steps forward again, palm up, palm down. I step forward. Notice the foot and hand position. The lead hand is with the lead foot, like we talked about earlier. From a natural walking posture, this is what it would look like. If I walk into him, I immediately crouch down into kuda kuda, and I'm in position to deal with what may be in front. He walks forward again, and I walk forward. That's the drill. Just go back and forth, back and forth. Okay, the second part of this drill is if my training partner uh, ends up with a training tool and I end up with a karambit, training karambit in my hand, again, starting from the foot posture where the opposing hand is in the same direction as the opposing foot uh, to simulate a natural walking posture. He's going to step forward and we're going to execute this drill as we did earlier with the chamandi drill. Now he steps forward with his hand, I'm going to check. Remember that thing we did where we, we came down on the object. He steps back, I execute Chimandi Satu. He steps backward again, and I use that simple downward motion that we talked about as we hacked earlier. Remember that chopping the carrots concept. He steps forward, same thing, Chimandi number one. With elbow control, remember the security of pushing down with the blade as you push up with the hand. He steps forward again, check to be sure you have good contact. He steps back, check, he steps back again, he steps forward, he steps forward. Okay, so he comes back one more time, and again, he steps forward, and one more time. key elements to success in mobility is being able to modify your direction, especially as it occurs and you don't know where or when it's going to occur, as for example in a multiple attacker scenario, or whether someone's in front of you, or off to the side, or behind you. So mobility and direction are tied together. In this specific drill, known as Kuda Kuda Satu, is the first drill, I'm going to uh, do this movement without my training partners, just to illustrate the juru or the basic mo motion with <clears throat> without a partner. So the first move is from a, a standing position, you would open up to the right, or you could open up to the left, kiri, dan kanan, either way. And then uh, from that position, once you're open, hands come forward. The first movement, again without your partner, would be moving one direction, keeping your hands at height, at shoulder height, coming back to center, and moving in the opposite direction back to center, and facing your partner, back to center, facing your partner, back to center, and bring your leg back. Okay, so this is known as the juru, or the movement without, without partners. Now if I can employ the assistance of my partners, as I'm changing position, his hand is going to come out, I'm going to move and position myself so as to catch, as we did in that first drill, palm up, palm down. I move back into center position. Out of the periphery of my eye, I see the other hand movement. Comes up, 
same position, palm down, palm up. Go back to center, move again to the outside, lock in position, come back to center, and move again. Noticing your partner's movement out of the corner of your eye. The second part of this drill is, if you are training with your training crumbit and your partners are each training with their trainer blades, if you could ask your partners to gauge for close range. So I'm going to gauge with my partner on the right, and I'm going to gauge with my partner on the left. <clears throat> when you begin this drill, you start the same way we did in the bua. Take your opening leg, come to the outside. When you sense movement on one side, you move towards that pick it up with the karambit and palm up, palm down. Remember what we talked about a little earlier. There's pressure down with the karambit and up with the opposing hand. As you exit, you come back to center. Movement then comes in from the opposite side and come up. So you have palm up and palm down. Just like we talked about earlier, thrusting upward. Back to center. You see it again on the opposite side. Palm down, palm up. Back to center. Palm down, palm up. Again, incorporating both mobility and directionality. This motion should be mastered long before you start changing uh, elevations and movement. So first we need to take a look at directional and then mix that in with our mobility. All right, so the first part of this drill is your uh, foot and hand, again, move at the same time. We're taking kuda kuda dua, which is the second position. As you move forward, you stay on that straight line. Just pretend this line in the mat here is your direction, you go forward again on that direction. Then, pivoting at the, uh, on, the, on the base of the foot as you turn, you've changed your position on that same line in the opposite direction, going the other way, you pivot again, facing forward. Remember your weight is strong on both legs, lowered, knees are low, hands are up at operational level, at about shoulder level. Step forward, pivot again, back, forward. Okay, now if I was to do this drill with my partners, <clears throat> we would gauge for uh, long distance or close distance uh, because it's not going to matter. He's either going to come in from long or come in from close. Okay, so we're going to start <clears throat> from this position. I begin with stepping with my lead leg and his lead arm. Then he steps back, I step forward. Right behind me, however, is another incoming strike in which I assume the high hand and low hand. Step forward again as he steps back. Same thing. Palm up, palm down. Just like we did in the Juru. Again, when you pivot, you want to keep a strong base. Uh, your weight's lowered, knees are bent, hands are operating at uh, shoulder height. You step forward, same position. As you pivot, again, palm up. Step in, palm down, pivot. The second part to this drill is if I am training with my training karambit and my partners are training with their training tools, the same technology is applied with the empty hand as it is with the karambit. So we're facing our partners. We're going to gauge for close range. I'll be stepping forward as he steps back. Same hand position as we did before, but the placement is now with the karambit on the training equipment. As he steps back, I check the hand and move forward. I sense movement behind me, comes in, lightly touch, he moves back, check on the equipment. Again, sensing movement, come up, move forward, sensing movement, and Mobility drill number four. As we talked about a little bit earlier, when you change elevation, especially going down to kneeling, establishing these three-point stance, stance is the most important element when you're dropping down so that you have stability moving forward or backward. Should it be the case that you end up in a straight line, you're in this surfing mode and your stability is compromised, make sure that you have a good solid three-point stance on the low line. This particular drill, <clears throat> 
you're moving forward on this knee, come up, the opposite knee comes up, you're going to the back, then to the front, and then back again. Okay, we'll take that again. Front knee comes down one, karamba comes across, switch positions with the knees, come back, and reset. So again, this knee drops forward as your weight shifts, the blade stays up, and you reestablish that solid three-point stance. When you change directions on the low line, you're coming across, keeping the blade up. Same thing, knee comes down first, reposition, solid three-point stance, and come back to your original position. Now that we have a strong understanding of mobility, direction, and operational functionality of the karambit, we're going to take all that and apply it to um, an element of training that we call takedowns, uh, which we normally would do uh, and can do with empty hand. Um, it's also done with a karambit. So we're going to take the same posture that we began with, and initially, when we walk, the opposite foot in the opposite hand. So when you do your movement, the palm goes from a palm up position to a palm down position, and you're going to be using the movement of your body with the knee coming towards the ground. Okay, we'll do that juru again. <clears throat> Stepping forward as if you were walking, hand comes up, so you have one hand down, one hand up, step, and the knee comes to center. Your hips should be turning to drive the body to the ground. You don't want to just use hands because it's arm strength versus body strength. So one more time as a Jiru, stepping forward, hand comes up. Use the weight of your body to drive the knee towards the ground. Okay, working with our training partner, <clears throat> he's going to extend his arm. That drill that we did earlier where it was palm up, palm down. We're now going to take the same steps that we did in the Jiru and apply it to the Bua by simply stepping forward using the downward palm and the body driving to the ground. Okay, one more time. <clears throat> Take the back leg and step, drop the body to the ground. Applying that with the karambit, if he happens to have a training blade in his hand, you're coming to the outside, the blade part turns down, you're locking. This is very similar to our earlier drill, where palm down, palm up. Now you're locking on the forearm and the tricep. Same movement, step and use the hips to take down. You want to maintain good control here, because if you don't, this is going to slip off and you're going to get cut. So remember, the top hand pushes down, the bottom hand pushes up all the way down to the ground. This next juru involves the same basic body motion. As you step forward, the hands move forward, keeping them up at shoulder height. <clears throat> As you step again, the lead hand will come down. Okay, this juru one more time. Lead hand, lead foot, and foot and hand. Okay, I'll show, I'll uh, demonstrate it from this side. One. Two. Again. One. Two. Okay, with our training partner, <clears throat> initially coming out to the outside, same basic position. This time when we step, the hand is going over the arm and pushing into the hip bone, and that's your takedown. Okay, we're going to turn and show it from this side. One. The hand is already on the top of the arm. It just shoots, locks it up under the arm, this way, under the armpit, as the fingers touch the hip and your body is brought to the ground by your knee. Now, facing our partners, if I'm working with a training karambit and he's working with a training tool, we're going to gauge for close distance. So he uh, makes sure that we're in close range. Again, the same exact position we did to, to begin with, with palm down on the upper and palm up on the lower, securing the wrist to the armpit as you make placement on the hip bone. The reason why we lock the palm up under is so that the blade doesn't come loose. If you end up doing this technique loosely, he has the opportunity to, 
to strike and move. So remember, keep the palm locked up tight under the arm as you continue your motion. Let's take a look at that from the opposite side. Same basic motion when you enter, lock it into position. As this comes down, the same movement you use to punch forward is the same motion you use to lock the hand under. When you take the foot forward, locking him into position, remember to push up with the hand as you maintain control with the upper arm. The third takedown in this first series, as you're stepping to the outside, the same principles apply as we did when we changed elevation. This time, instead of operating on his same level, you've changed levels and you've dropped to the Hauri Mao position. From this position, you can place your foot forward against his foot and rest on your body as you come to Duduk, or what they call seated position, Duduk, and move forward. Okay, let's we'll take a quick look at that again. Primary move, coming to the outside, just like we did walking earlier. Drop to your Harimau. Then from Harimau, change elevations yet again, down to Duduk, and turn forward. Okay? With our partner, <coughs> we'll analyze the, the Bua to this one. As, he's, as his strike comes in, you're coming to the outside, Chimundi Satu. When you step down into your Harimau, you've changed elevation. At this point, you're locking your foot on his and come to Duduk, which is the seated posture, and continue your movement. <clears throat> if you'd like to practice this with the hand, it is executed simply by dropping down and using the hand to manipulate the knee. Facing our partner with our training tools, <clears throat> we're going to modify this to fit the application of the tool. As he uh, delivers a slow and controlled thrust to the midsection, remember this is down and away from the body. As you come down, use your hand for support, extend forward direction, hook the knee, and come down. Disarming with the karambit. There are some basic elements which we need to uh, present here to uh, clarify an understanding of disarming with the karambit. When disarming, the thumb which controls the connection of the handle of a uh, potential weapon to the fingers is in control, then you have control of it. If you don't have that control, then it's in control of you. It's uh, kind of an old, one of those old sayings. You control it or it controls you. So our primary objective is to control that dangerous part, which is the thumb. Without the thumb control, there's little or nothing the remainder of the fingers can do. It needs, they need the opposing digit for support. Okay, so one of the best training drills when you come out is to form the same posture, slide the fingers, one, two, three, four fingers, base of the thumb. Okay, back again. He comes in, four fingers, base of the thumb. The opposite to that is he does the same exact movement, stepping away, four fingers, base of the thumb, one, two, three, four. Stepping away, four fingers, base of the thumb, one, two, three, four. All right, so the first one again is in with one hand, step back, he comes in again, down and away, one, two, three, four. Slow motion, one, and the second one, Application of the disarm in our prior drills, the second series will begin with the disarm followed by the takedown. <clears throat> Again, facing our partner, if it's the case that he's thrusting in a slow and controlled manner to the center line, we're going to operate in the same way we did before by coming in with the same entry, masuk, same entry. This hand is then going to slide down in the same direction as the karambit, assume four fingers base of the thumb and strip the blade. You then lock the arm. As you do your step, transfer to the tricep and pull down. Same principle applies. The bottom hand is pushing up, top hand is pushing down. And that same technique, remember, when you enter, it's just like we did earlier. Pressing up with the bottom hand, pressing down with the top hand. As you slide down, four fingers base of the thumb, strip it, change positions. As you start to walk, 
then you can switch your hand to the tricep and take down. Facing our partners for the second in this second series. Same basic position, same entry, coming to the outside, four fingers slide down, do your strip. As you come in now, this goes under your arm and lock. Then the hand transfers up and push. Okay, quick look at that again. Two key points. One, when you come to the outside, it's the same position as we did earlier, locking the arm. The karambit follows first, then the second hand. Most common mistake you'll see students make is driving it into their own hand. Try and avoid this. Come up, move it so that both the blade is checked and the four fingers. Do your strip, go forward into the hip bone position, switch hands to lock it under the arm, and take down. The third part of the second series is with the strip or disarm before the takedown, your partner will again gauge for close quarter distance. When he executes a slow and controlled thrust to your midsection, trained by keeping the bottom hand pushing up and the top hand pushing down. After you do the strip or the disarm, lock the foot and extend and pushing in against the knee very carefully. Series three. This is called Chikalong, entries from the outside. This is from the system from Chikalong Village. Okay, we're gonna face our partner. And if he's uh, delivering from the high line, gauging with me to make sure he's within range, he'll then slowly and controlled deliver. Remember our first movement, our first place, placement was up on the high line. Hand comes over, four fingers base of the thumb and strip. Now what if he punches the other hand? This comes in on the outside. You're gonna move your body to the outside and lock into position. Then a slight move forward will cause body motion to the ground. Okay, from this angle. <clears throat> High line attack, stopping on the outside, four fingers base of the thumb and strip. The punch comes in, pick it up, move your body to the side, and then just a slight movement forward will cause him to go down to the ground. The second part to this drill, as he attacks or slashes on the high line, you enter, come to your disarm, strip, the punch comes in, come to the outside, and here you have another option. When you're stopped with a hook, you're a little bit closer to his body. You can take your lead leg and step to the heel behind and just gently push forward. We'll take a look at that again from this side. Same entry. Four fingers, base of the thumb. Strip, the punch comes in. Pick it up on the outside. Move to position. Now take that rear leg and step on the outside of his foot. A gentle little push. It's all you need to take him down. You want to keep this knee down over that leg in case he tries to kick. A third option, again from the Chickalong series number three, if he comes in from the high line, blocking, four fingers base of the thumb, strip. As if he punches, you come in and come to the outside. In this case, extend the crumbit below the knee. Here you can then step and with the assistance of the crumbit and your foot, he goes down and be sure that he can't come up with that foot. If the other leg comes at you, come back to protect. In this section, we'll be addressing what's called Harimau Tangan, or the hands of the tiger, or tiger hands. Our partner, uh, as we face our partner, our training partner will uh, thrust in a slow and controlled manner to the center. You come out with your first Chimundi and lock. Four fingers base of the thumb and strip. If he decides to punch, lock over his own arm with your arm and secure with the karambit. Okay, let's take a look at that. A little bit broken down. Outside and strip. If the punch comes in, pass it over his arm, lock your arm into position, and then just lightly drop down on the wrist. It's very uncomfortable for him. 
We'll take a look at that from a different angle. Come to the inside, do your strip. As that comes over, this crosses over the body. Your elbow then puts the lid on the trash can. As you shift your body, the blade comes down and locks against the hand as you push forward. Now let me show you that from the other side. A slow and controlled thrust to the midsection, four fingers base of the thumb, strip. This hand comes in, you're going to pass over his arm, crossing over the center line. Then put the lid over the trash can. This blade stays in your center. As you move your body forward, that locks it into position using his own arm. You still have not let go with the four fingers base of the thumb, and simply push down and away with the edge of the crumb, but forward. Thank you for joining us in tape two. Please join me in tape three where we will present putting all the pieces together. Additionally, we'd like to extend our sincere appreciation to the modern masters of edge weapons for their immense pool of knowledge from which this body of information was derived for self-defense application. Guru Dan and Asanto. Guru Basar Herman. Sawanda, Bapa Suherman, Welcome to part three. In this volume of the series, we'll be addressing the more advanced uh, movements with the karambit. In this section, we'll be working escapes with the karambit. For example, if the left hand is extended and being grabbed, all she has to do is turn the palm up and place the karambit under, separating the two. Okay, let's take a look at that again. Let's look at that from a different angle. Switch positions. One of the more advanced applications with the karambit is what is known as kunchis, K-U-N-C-I, kunchi, which means lock, or in some dialects means key. And we've seen these before in other forms of art, where you have wrist locks, such as this, or rich locks, such as this, or say, shoulder locks, or finger locks. These are known as kunchis, or locks. So the same principles can be applied with the karambit. From a high line strike, if you bring your body forward, 
you can lock the top hand under as you come around, pivot the body. Try that again. High line strike and block. Lead hand comes under as you step across and pivot your body. Okay, with your partner, on a high line slash to the head, that same thing we did earlier, palm comes down. Remember that motion of turning like a cam against the hand. The same hand comes under and the opposite hand grabs, you have a double arm lock. That's a very difficult takedown because the back of his head has no way to break the fall. Okay, one more time from that same position on the high line. Block, back of the hand, turn. The same hand goes over and shoots under. Second hand grabs and secures on the bicep. Now facing our partner, if he's using his training tool and I'm using the training karambit, coming in on the high line, again, approach it from the same angle. Bottom hand's pushing up, right hand's pushing down. Four fingers base of the thumb, do your strip in a controlled manner. As you come under, lock out and push so as to lock with the karambit. Be careful not to do one of these. Make sure it's the hand above or the hand below. We're gonna take that one more time. As it comes up on the high line, come to the outside, four fingers base of the thumb, strip. As you come through, extend the karambit forward, weave into the back arm, and take down.
Since 1984, INI Sports has featured the largest selection of paintball equipment, martial arts supplies, boxing gear, and custom knives. And with discounts from 10 to 60% off, there's no reason to shop anywhere else. So stop by or call us today. Visit any of our three Southern California locations seven days a week with stores to serve you in West L.A., City of Industry, and Carson. Or call 310-715-6800. INI Sports, we've got what you need. <laughs>